obviously we turn the dial up quite a bit on this show, but I'm really hoping that people are going to watch the show and be able to see their own lives, their own circumstances, their own relationships in this. And, and that's going to be partly what, you know, compels them about the show. Gugu and David, I'm so excited to talk to you too. Um, first of all, congrats on the show. It feels very Hitchcockian. And, you know, one Fullgate Street is a very interesting home. So right off the bat, I want to know, do you guys want to live in that kind of home? Do you like a summer home, vacation home? Gugu, let's start with you. <laughs> A vacation home. Um, yeah. I feel like it's not a sort of long term living solution for me. It's not really cozy enough um, or homely enough um, for me to feel sort of like that's where my soul lives. But um, but I think maybe um, for a holiday or for a party, I think it could be it could be fun. David, what about you? A absolutely not. You know, <laughs> I have. I have four kids. I have four dogs. I even have a parrot and a turtle. Can you imagine <laughs> Edward Monkford knowing there was a turtle in one? Even with a turtle, actually, in the in the little atrium or something. But mm. I I, the I think housekeeper would like incinerate <laughs> the turtle. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, but I'm looking at your very homely setup there as well. Like you would definitely not pass the test. I'm sorry. Uh, I to, <laughs> So, so yeah, so all of us would be disqualified, and I think we're the better for it. Yeah, we are. Um, you know, uh, Gugu, I'm so excited for you because this is your first time as a producer on this project, and I'm wondering what attracted you to wanting to ha have this project as your first? Many reasons. I mean, partly or mostly because I was invited uh, by 42. I initially, you know, um, signed up to play, play the role, and um, I was the first actor attached and I think um you know there were only two scripts written uh, um when I was attached and so to be able to be part of that script development process was an amazing learning curve for me and I think um the times that it was during lockdown over zoom when when we were all meeting discussing the scripts and casting um was a wonderful opportunity for me to sort of stretch new muscles in terms of you know obviously as an actor you spend so much time just very focused on your character and I think for me it's been a great experience to be able to sort of broaden my perspective about how you make a tv show and um you know all the elements involved and it was especially gratifying for me as you know alongside part of the casting process in in uh, casting the amazing Jessica Plummer who plays Emma um, to be able to call my friend David um, and, and let him know that, you know, we we were really excited to send him the script. And, you know, as an actor that I've worked with and admire, you know, that was that was a wonderful um, bonus of of the producerial role as well to be able to invite David um, into the cast. Yeah. And David, your character, Edward, is charming, but he has a very mysterious background. So how did you you know prepare for this role that is so complex? I just turned up and I played myself. Yeah. Um, is basically what I did. Um, no, <laughs> um, no, that's exactly that's exactly why I wanted to do it. Is that he is he is a walking contradiction. He is charming, and and therefore you can understand why he attracts these you know um, uh, 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 wonderful women in in a sense. But then he is also repellent because even they start to realize there is something about this that doesn't feel wholly comfortable. But by then, he's sort of somehow sucked them into his web. And there are things he affords, whether it's the the fortress-like existence that helps them, you know, fortify away from the trauma and the pain that they've experienced, the uh, exacting rules that gives their lives some kind of... Um, structure that they have lacked because everything has been taken away from them and they felt sort of like they're flailing a bit but you know then he's capitalizing on this he's maybe taking advantage of this um as well and there are many relationships that are like that you know that are codependent that are not wholly uh, healthy um but you know people are in them for all sorts of reasons obviously we turn the dial up quite a bit on this show, but I'm really hoping that people are going to watch the show and be able to see their own lives, their own circumstances, their own relationships in this. And, and that's going to be partly uh, what, 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 you know, compels them about the show. 
Well, I'm so excited for everyone to see the show. And, you know, before I let you guys go, Goo, I've loved you since Bell, and I've loved you now as Renslayer and Loki. So without spoiling anything, um, what are your hopes for season two, especially now that the TVA has been outed? Oh, my God. You know I can't say anything about Loki. The Marvel police will come along and just, you know, take me away. Um, but no, I'm, I'm excited that it's happening. And um, I, you know, I really love my character. I think she's unexpected and complex. And um, so I'm excited to sort of, um, you know, go to sort of some deeper, darker places with her as well. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. And again, congrats. Congrats.